procedural uh, and uh, there's often a, an element that is a, anachronistic or sort of trying to um, change a logical relationship to time in painting so um, uh, aesthetically the paintings change quite a bit from one um, body of work I make to another and it's not always painting I also work with sculpture and with video sometimes but uh, I think the the relationship that all the work has with each other is looking for a way to work that is uh, somehow not enslaved to the, the necessity of progress uh, or um, arrival or something, but uh, some kind of way of working that is just more related to like a form of maintenance or painting as a way of breathing or watering the plants or something like this. These are two light gel covered paintings and they're primarily a kind of work which is slightly newer, which is overlaying um, entire paintings with each other. So usually before paintings would be um, gel sprayed and a light gel painting separate. But these are overlaid on top of each other to create some kind of noise or distortion or try to confuse where to locate the graphic or the effect. My work is based on inventing a new visual language based on pure abstraction. And um, through my work, I try and invent signs and symbols that have never existed before. Um, sort of trying to create a new language um, through an alphabet and then words and sentences. And this piece is more like a single um, sign or symbol, or we can even look at it in, the, in line of language. We can think of it as maybe a letter or maybe a really small word. So here I have a single uh, piece from a series I call Image Objects. Um, they're essentially uh, colorful UV prints on a material called Sintra, which is a um, kind of rigid but soft plastic. And a large part of the project is essentially taking these forms which uh, start digitally and could essentially have been anything, any form. Um, and then taking the installation views of those images and going back into them, editing them, sort of uh, allowing for the possibility for the form of the piece to mutate and shift over time as it's seen or disseminated. in the show is from the beginning of the series uh, Studio Constructs. I began in about 2006, I guess, and uh, the one on uh, my left is one of the earlier ones, and the one on my right is one of the most recent ones. So it's sort of the beginning and the end of that construct series or Studio Construct series. When I started this series, I was looking for materials that had no 
representational value in terms of metaphor. Um, and so the materials I chose were, were very um, maybe bland or um, without any meaning and uh, because I wanted to make an abstraction uh, in, in a photograph. The work in the exhibition here is one work from a series of three, all started with uh, one image which showed a piece of timber in three stages of reconstitution um, after it had been taken from part of a shipwreck. So the, the single image was broken up into three and then each of those images was broken again into three and then each of the works in the series of three works shows three of those images. It's a broken up image of a reconstituted piece of material. I think the best way to talk about the work is through the title, so it's from a series of work called Sedimentary Samples, sort of st stages to different kinds of temporality. Um, one referring to sedimentary or sediments, which is the formation of rocks um, under like the pressure and weight of water in the ocean. Um, that's the, the compression of lots of matter, different objects, different detritus, um, together into a unity or a single plane or bed over thousands of years and that's one kind of sense of temporality and um, the other being sample which kind of derives more from the commercial world of abstracting uh, a colour or a texture or a, a quantity which a consumer might then kind of look at and inform their decision of how they would use it and utilise it, say like a carpet sample or whatever. Um, and the final surface is this kind of rocky geological fragment. Thank you.